Good, how are you, Marie? Good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you too. You're out in the east. I'm out in the west. And uh, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to get together with you and retrace some steps that we, we walked together quite some time ago. Um, so it's going to be uh, part reminiscence and, and part offering. And, and by offering, I mean, I appreciate your generosity and be willing to share some of your story for those who... I imagine are going to be watching or listening uh, are perhaps on the threshold of transition. Change has already happened, you know, perhaps, you know, that uh, change has either happened to us or change is happening from within us. And uh, you were no stranger to that when we first embarked uh, upon our time together. But before we go there, maybe uh, just a little bit of an introduction to, uh, to yourself, please. Sure. Um, so Kareem Manji and uh, you and I met in uh, our previous lives of uh, working together in the same organization. Um, from a personal perspective, I'm uh, happily married with two very young children, a five and a half year old and a two and a half year old, both of whom think that they're actually 20 some years old. <laughs> um, and uh, we lived. Uh, we live in a mixed uh, generational uh, or multi generational home. Uh, as I take care of my mom as well, who has uh, Alzheimer's disease, and I'm her primary caregiver. So, from a personal standpoint, that's uh, a little bit about me. I um, I was born in South Africa. I've lived in uh, Portugal and uh, the majority of my life in Canada. So. Uh, I like to tell people by the time I was eight, I lived on three continents and spoke three languages. So um, a lot of exposure in that time. You're one of my most exotic friends. I've never been called exotic, <laughs> but I, I appreciate that. And as soon as we're done with this call, I'm going to tell my wife that she should refer to me as her exotic husband. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, thank you for the introduction. And, and so as I like, as I like to, uh, to do with these calls, because I, I believe it offers important context, is sure. even before we decided to engage with each other right. uh, in transition in your name, maybe you could take us back just a little bit to, you know, what sort of in general terms was happening that gave rise to you considering bringing someone close to your story? Um, I, think, um, I think it's fair to say that most people go through um, some sort of life event or some sort of inner uh, assessment. Um, and I've always been an introspective type of person, but just never sort of listened to that inner voice telling me there's, it's time for a change or time for an assessment to do something different. And um, it just so happened at the time um, that I was uh, going through a uh, marital breakup um, and, you know, someone I had been with and we both had done our master's together and um, a true friend. I was, you know, I was uh, blessed to have been married to someone I would call a good friend. Um, but we just recognized that our, our, our relationship as it was as a married couple wasn't, wasn't working. And to be honest with you, more so she realizing that before me, and I'm being quite transparent and, and uh, open here. Mm -hmm. um, and so that gave cause and was, the, was essentially kind of the trigger or the catalyst for me to sort of think through, um, there must be something beyond this that speaks to what was happening in the, in, uh, the breakdown of the marriage, but also beyond that in terms of who I am, how I react to certain things um what is it that really will make me happy um all of those things were starting to come together and even even uh, what was happening with my career and why was i even though i was achieving a lot of successes in the career as most people would define those successes i didn't feel uh fulfilled um and so it was all of that coming to a head if you will where I said to myself, something has to give, something has to change. I need to, I need to work on myself. I need to do some, some inner work. Uh, there's some people reference that these days is called inner engineering. 
Uh, but uh, but that's really the precipitous for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just so happened that you and I kind of knew each other through a professional setting. Um, you were responsible actually for me uh, working in the consulting group at uh, the organization we worked together at. So I thank you for that opportunity because that alone gave me a lot of opportunity. But um, it was just the friendship that you and I had built over time that to me was transcended friendship and it was more there was a sense of trust that was there yeah well thank you i uh, i remember those days those early days fondly and first getting to know you and uh yeah in a corporate setting and, and a friendship wasn't far behind um just given you know the high quality and caliber of person that you are thank you and being close to your story um I, I knew what had, had happened back then as far as a catalytic event is concerned. And then, you know, through, uh, through our friendship, we got to know each other better. And uh, I had the privilege of getting a little bit closer to your story. And by that time, of course, I had moved on from the organization and I was, uh, I was on my own. Correct. And, and perhaps you could share, Kareem, and, you know, how is it that I came to have the privilege of, of you know, walking a chapter of your life that was, you know, important to you back then? Um, Well, number one, we kind of knew each other. So there was already this baseline sense of uh, comfort that I certainly had, because as you know, I'm quite a private individual. Um, Part of it is culturally driven. Part of it is just uh, how I grew up. And part of it is my own sense of, uh, I would say lack of confidence or insecurities that kind of start emanating. And um, so when you want to reach out to someone, you first of all have to ask yourself, if I reach out to a complete stranger, and a lot of people do sometimes, um, how do I build that sense of trust? Uh, but you and I already had that. Uh, and even though it was within the context of a professional setting, uh, in terms of working together and in the context of being friends, um, I was more reluctant to speak to close friends than I was to you, even though you were considered, in my opinion, a close friend. And I think it's a lot about our conversations that I think <clears throat> just organically transitioned into an opportunity I thought to work together. And it was funny as I was going through that those life events and and that sense of yearning for some sort of change. Um, I was reading a lot of books, those self-help type of books. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of them that really sort of resonated with me was just working towards investing in friendships and people as they are progressing through life. And I thought in two ways, it was a win-win. One was an opportunity for me to invest in you and show my confidence in you as you were doing um, a a sort of a new career. Um, And then the other was also that I get to benefit from it because I'm investing in myself through that process. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't have done it just with anyone. It had to be someone that I felt a sense of trust and confidence. And I think what strikes me about you, Marie, you know, all the years, and I think it's what, over 20 years that we've known each other now, um, is always a sense of authenticity and transparency. Um, You're more apt to trust and open up and show your vulnerability to someone who you believe would do the same. Um, And it's never a feeling of being judged. It's more a feeling of um, a very honest, dialogue and conversation, I think is the best way to describe it. Yeah, thank you. Um, and so for me, all of those components together um, just made sense to, to do this. And it felt safe, I guess is the best way to describe it, it felt safe. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you for, for that acknowledgement. And uh, yeah, we, uh, we've had this mutual trust. And, you know, for those who, you know, this sort of thing doesn't begin with the benefit of a friendship that we have. Um, There, there, there really needs to be a sense that that trust is possible at the early going and that that will be, that will be earned and re-earned and re-earned again 
over time. I, I'm a big believer that trust is something that is sort of continuously validated and earned and deepened, ideally, I, ideally. Um, for if yeah. it's not, then- what I'll say to you is, uh, you know, I always look. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think for me, had I not known you previously, um, and if I think about, you know, when you're engaging with anyone, uh, whether it be a life coach, um, a psychotherapist, it doesn't matter in any, any realm, uh, even a coach, a sports coach, you know, how do you build that trust when you don't know someone? And I think just the, the opportunity to meet with someone even once or twice and to get an understanding of their philosophy in terms of that relationship um, is um, important. And with you, I always heard you reference your commitment to the partnership, not just my commitment to the partnership. And I think, you know, when you think about uh, contracts and agreements and stuff, often it's more the, the consumer and what they're committing uh, to do. And very rarely does the, the, the person offering or the company offering the service uh, provide their commitment. It's usually an indemnification. I'm using, you know, corporate terminology, but, yes. uh, but I remember looking back at our contract and nowhere did it say you're doing this, you're doing this, you're, it said my commitment, that being you saying that it was your commitment to this partnership. And I found that refreshing. Yes. You know, as I was saying before, uh, Murray, like if, if I didn't know you from before, um, you know, I always ask myself, how would I build that trust? And part of it was actually obviously having conversations with you. But the other part was when you put in front of me um, the approach you take um, towards um, engaging in a partnership with, um, with people, what I found refreshing and I think differentiating um, is that sense of commitment on your end. Uh, and not only a sense but also you stating that explicitly that this was your commitment. It wasn't just about what I brought to the table. And so it was quite refreshing to sort of feel that sense of partnership and uh, someone holding your hand along the way, as opposed to someone telling you how it should be done or expecting you to, to do it all. Um, it was comforting. And I think when you're going through these types of changes and introspection and looking for that kind of opportunity to, to engage in coaching. Um, most people are looking for it from the perspective of having someone guide them, but guide them without judgment, guide them um, um, in terms of a lockstep approach. So walking with me as opposed to walking in front of me or walking behind me. Um, I found that refreshing about your approach to this. And I don't think it's an approach. I think that's who you are. I think that that's your, uh, that's, that's, that's Murray. Um, that sense of commitment to the partnership uh, is something that I don't think a lot of people have. I think, uh, I think those that do, it comes across and it's very authentic as it relates to you. And you're also very transparent about how you approach that. So I, I found all those things uh, comforting and I would have been working with you um, even if I didn't know you from before, I think. Because, you know, I'm, I'm sure that you're engaging with a lot of people that you might not have met in the past or had a previous relationship or friendship or whatever with. And so I always ask myself, what made me come to, to, um, to have that trust and that confidence that I think you're the right person to help me through this process. Yeah, well, thank you. I uh, uh, hum humbling to hear and and, uh, and appreciate it. And you know, it's the it's that spirit of partnership where we we come together and we create something. As I uh, I have to chuckle because as I often say, if you think that I've reached the promised land and now I'm going to take you to the promised land, you need to keep shopping. <laughs> Because we uh, we move forward, we move forward together, and we discover together, and uh, and and that that's what makes 
the magic happen of the co-creative kind of relationship, the partnership that you speak of. Yeah. So Kareem, maybe you could touch on, you know, the the during part of of our experience together. There's, you know, sort of a two part two part question, and that is. Um, what did you experience, if anything, as it relates to a, a process of engagement? And, and, and then built on that earlier trust, what, what was in fact your experience real time uh, as we worked together? Perhaps you could comment on the collaboration and, and what it was like actually working together. So first of all, from a process of engagement is absolute, not only the words commitment, but the actual action of commitment um the the consistent follow-up um was appreciated um and that there was a sense of structure to it so um you know often when you engage in these uh partnerships you wonder uh is it just a free-for-all discussion all the time or is it going to have some kind of like a meaningful framework that will will without you even realizing it take you through the process and so for me, from a process of engagement perspective, I appreciated that as well. Um, was that I don't think that you were just coming to every conversation with pie in the sky kind of thoughts. I think that there was a purpose uh, behind the structure that was going to reveal something new to me. And every time we engaged in a conversation, I felt like something else had come out that I hadn't been aware of, I didn't expect and was feeling a sense of fulfillment and nourishment around that. So I think that that from a process standpoint was important. Um, the structure around the, the cadence around meeting and all those kinds of things, the, the logistics of it all was there. But I think behind that was also the structure and the, the framework and the, the tools, I think is the best way to describe it, that you employed to get the best out of those conversations. Um, and so that's from a process standpoint. And then, and then remind me what the second part of the question was. And I don't know if I've answered the first part. Yeah, no, I, no, I really appreciate that feedback and it's good to hear. I mean, we work together. We talked about it at the outset of the call. We work together through this significant change and transition of yours some 17, 17 years ago. I mean, this is, this is a long time back. You were one of my very first engagements. Um, that is after I went out on my own because I had been moonlighting. <laughs> Admittedly, I'd been moonlighting for uh, a half a dozen years before I actually uh, decided to go out on my own. So um, it's good to hear. It's good to remember that you experience structure and, uh, you know, all these revolutions and evolutions later where the, the, the you know, the next evolutions of the work uh, it, it's good to hear that uh, those were the roots that you experienced. And the B part of the question was around, you know, the collaboration, the interaction, you know, what it's like working with a guy like me um, experience. So there's the process part. And then there's, you know, what's it like as people look in and, and get to be a little bit of a voyeur into our conversation is what was it like? Um the first thing that comes to mind, and I've said this a, a few times, but I think it's the crux of, of these types of relationships is without question, um, there was no doubt that there was always an element of trust. Um, so that was part of what, was it, what it was like. Then I think that where I think you're truly gifted, <clears throat> and sometimes I, I, I think you're quite humble and modest about it, um, is your gift, your gift of communication. I truly believe it is a gift that you have. I don't think it's something that's trained. I think it's just innate in you. But your approach to conversations, uh, your uncanny ability to ask questions in such a way that uh, to get to the crux of the matter without being uh, um, blunt about it or being very strong, um, strong handed about it, I thought was quite nice. Um, I always felt comforted. I felt uh, secure, I think. Um, and I felt like I could be myself without judgment. And I've mentioned that as well before. So, so that's what it's like working with you is that sense of this person really knows how to listen. This person really knows then how to sort of play it back in a way that you might not have heard it in when you're talking about it yourself. 
And that was important. I think sometimes you used to play back what I've said, but just in a slightly different way that made me have aha moments, which I wouldn't have had normally. I, you know, you can talk and talk and talk, and then you never take a step back to sort of say, what, what did you just say? But you had this uncanny ability to sort of uh, play it back in a way that I could understand. And I saw it from a different lens. And I think that that type of uh, what it was like to work with you was, was uh, professional always, uh, but extremely trusting, um, very authentic, um, transparent also on your end. Like I found that what I, that what I really enjoyed was, you know, when you're looking for guidance and seeking support, you often feel like someone is essentially kind of not judging you all the time, but also looking down that they have it better than you have and you'll get there eventually. But I never felt that with you. I felt that you were, you were being vulnerable in your own sharing of your experiences in life and being true to those experiences and how you grew those and how you were growing. So, um, you know, I always asked you, it was like, as a coach, do you ever feel like you've got it all down packed and you know exactly what's going on? <laughs> you shared with me that, no, this is a journey that everyone is on. I think that that was powerful for me. Um, and I enjoyed that because it made me feel comfortable in sharing with you things. I, I, I'll be honest with you, Marie, that I don't think I shared with friends that I've known since I, I was a young child uh, and family members that are my blood. Uh, relatives, but um, and that in normal circumstances, I would trust them with my life, but I still didn't feel comfortable sharing it with you with them uh, as I did with you. Um, and I'm being very sincere in those comments. Well, you you exude sincerity, and uh, you know what a what a privilege for me. And back to your point about partnership is that it takes an openness on your part to let me in that facilitates a greater openness on my part to let you in. And there's this beautiful sort of symbiotic kind of relationship that happens. And, uh, you know, and, and then clarity emerges through those kinds of conversations because I can't take, I can't paraphrase or play back unless you're willing to invest. And so, you know, that's that's how we build on each other, right? And uh, and again, that's as I said earlier, that's where the magic happens. We're you know what? Little, we're getting a little bit of a click on the recording, but for the most part, our recording is clear. Good. Okay, that's great. Um, you know, one thing that was consistent throughout the process of working together was um, I felt like I was learning something new about myself and I was continuously growing um, and you can't define that by a number or a chart or something like that but I just felt that okay I'm moving forward I some sense of um, movement there's some sense of progress there's some sense of change and 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 also those times when you felt like you took two steps forward and three steps back that was okay um, because we all go through that right uh, as you rediscover or discover something new, you start reflecting back and, and it makes you look at something very differently. So that was also, as, as I developed more clarity, as you put it, um, I had a better sense of growth um, and I learned more. And I, I always felt like I was amazed at your, your ability to recall because we would have a conversation, six conversations later, and you would bring something back from what we talked about, you know, a couple of months prior, but you would do it with, with the uh, uncanny ability to recall it in such a way and with such detail that um, you were able to use it as an example in the conversation we were having. And I was always blown away by that ability that, that you can in fact do that. And that to me meant you were listening. Um, that to me meant that you were actually internalizing what I was saying and looking beyond what I was just saying. Because quite often I was saying things with uh, a hidden message because I didn't know how to share it in a different way. Uh, mm -hmm. and yet you were able to uncover that. Um, sometimes it used to freak me out how you used to be able to do that. <laughs> 
Well, I uh, th thank you. Thank you for seeing me. I, uh, I am most grateful for that. Um, you know, we, you mentioned the, uh, the, the two steps forward and three steps backward kind of experience. And uh, coincidentally today, um, the, the logo for my work, which is, which is um, freeing your true nature, is the upward looping roller coaster kind of spiral where it when we're in the when we're going backwards in the roller coaster it can feel like we're going back to square one but if we look over our shoulder we see actually that the starting line was was way below us it just doesn't feel that way. it doesn't feel that way the other thing i'd like to comment on is you know we all have relationships in our lives and when they when they don't go according to plan, that can be quite devastating. And what I so admire about you, Kareem, is you were so dedicated to, to your own process of, of understanding how you showed up and how you could take the insight that you gleaned from that catalytic experience in your life and have, have your insights inform your future. And so I, I acknowledge it in acknowledging you as a person and acknowledge it as well from the standpoint that you are um, a model of the commitment that, that of what's made possible by the commitment to the process, your own process, your own process. I'm a guide, I'm a facilitator, but you really are the process, right? right. You, you are the unfolding. I'm, I'm there to try to um, um, encourage you along. And so, I mean, it's a good segue to, you know, the final question is, you know, so this time has passed and uh, the viewer and the listener are getting a little bit of insight into what happened and that there was a marriage breakdown. And, you know, of course, whatever you're comfortable sharing, but um, I, I'm, I'm imagining looking in at this for the first time, and I am more than curious as to, so how did it go? <laughs> you know, what happened? You know? So again, you know, as I often say to my fellow journeyers, there's a big difference between the personal nature of the work and privacy, personal and privacy. So as I ask you this question, as I ask questions in our work together, it is, um, it is, of course, of a personal nature, but I never mean uh, whatsoever to infringe on anything private. So whatever you're comfortable sharing, wonderful. It's just, what's the after? You know, looking back now through the rearview mirror of time and experience and all that you've moved through since then. So the number one thing, for, <clears throat> first of all, that I should say is, um, and you and I talked about this back then, is I always thought, oh, you know, I'm going to, reach a certain day where I feel like, okay, everything is checked off and all of the, all of the elements of the perfect life are, are there. And what I recognize is that, that, um, that you're in a lifelong journey. It's not, it doesn't end one day. I think that big terminology people use today is that they're lifelong learners. And I think that that's very apropos is that one, one thing I've recognized is that I'm continuously on this journey of learning. And as my own, sense of self evolved and the things around me evolve uh that even the definition of what i i'm i'm seeking is evolving i'm on a constant path of discovery but there there's a couple of things that even you know 15 20 years after working together that still resonate with me um there are two conversations one was the conversation that you and i had about what's that perfect day look like mm -hmm. Um, and you said, start from the beginning in the morning, right until the end of the day. And I always reflect on that conversation because to me, that's somewhat of my uh, North Star, my, uh, my uh, guiding light, if you will, that I'm constantly seeking, both from a professional standpoint as well as a personal standpoint. Um, and so, you know, all these years after uh, having gone through the input, the the circumstances of a divorce. Um, I'm today happily married and I've got two young children. And I, you know, I recall speaking to you back then and not thinking 
I'll ever, you know, be blessed with a family again. And since uh, you have that sense that that's, that's it. Um, and you don't buy into the fact that things will evolve, things will uh, will come out for the better, and things happen. And you're always in the meantime. But uh, but yeah. that that really transpired for me, and I'm very appreciative of that. Uh, and that other part that I always reflect on that has stayed with me all these years is, I, you know, we used to talk about it back then as the social self versus the essential self or the true self versus the false self. Um, and I always reflect on that because, you know, I grew up in an environment uh, with some cultural uh, dynamics that, that make you think about how you also want to impress people around you and how what other people think matters uh, versus what you think about yourself. Mm-hmm. And um, I always use that as a quick pinch on my wrist whenever I catch myself in the wrong space and whenever I catch myself thinking more about what others might think versus what I want to think uh, or what others might define as important versus what I define as important. And I, those two things discussing the perfect day and visualizing it has led to realization of some of that. Um, and, and the whole notion about making sure that you keep yourself in check in terms of are you talking to the social or the essential self or the true or the false self is, um, is really, really powerful. Um, so that has led to a lot of what I think I've done. Today, I'm in a situation where I have a beautiful family and I get to impart some of that thinking to my children. Uh, which which I think is fantastic um, because I learned from you and I uh, you know I share that knowledge and I'm constantly seeking um, what I want to do in life that's going to give me that sense of happiness and fulfillment on a daily basis and I recognize and accept the fact that that might not happen today it might have happened in the past and then myself has shifted and that will change in the future but accepting that and knowing that you're working towards that greater good and greater good, I think is powerful. Mm-hmm. I'm so grateful that you you brought up the true self and the false self. And today in, in, uh, in my current, current terminology, it's uh, our, our true nature and our false nature. And I hold a fundamental belief that's rooted all the way back then and even before that we each hold a true nature and that it is bread of light, love and creativity. And, but there's also this false nature that we tangle with and hustle with. And, uh, and it's a necessary part of our experience because it is often through our experience of our false nature that we uh, come into higher elevations of understanding of in fact, what our true nature is. And, you, you went through a period of darkness and, and discovered falsities there and you discovered truths through those falsities. And, and look, look at the wonderful story that you can tell us today about the decisions and choices you made from there that have opened up your life experience and, and incidentally will continue to do so uh, it, uh, as long as we continue to be the, those kinds of people that are open to you know, embracing what those next catalytic changes might have to offer us. Yeah. And uh, so thank you so much, Kareem, for, for sharing that uh, of yourself, those, those couple of, of points and memories of our earlier time together. And, and beyond that, thank you for your time this evening, um, for bringing that generosity of spirit that is just who you are as a human being. You're, you're, a, you're a real giver. And I know that wherever and whenever, I mean, you're also so, so immersed in community and, and community is a core value of yours. So I've, I've come to know that wherever and whenever you can be of assistance and help another human being, you are, you are there. And that is, you are the next generation of that, because I also know that you're you know, your parents have very much been that way. And, and your kids will be too, just by virtue of being blessed to have you uh, as their dad. 
And so thank you for your time tonight. Thank you for taking me back down a trip down memory lane. Um, it all kind of floods back. And, uh, and I continue to be blessed to have you in my, in my, in my world. So uh, thank you, Kareem. Likewise, I'll just end with one note in, in saying that the fact that we worked together so long ago and still um, those experiences, those conversations resonate with me today. And my wife will tell you that my memory is not the best sometimes <laughs> um, is, uh, is a testament, right? It's a testament to how uh, impactful that period was when we were engaged in this partnership um, and how I think that that type of work can help others. Um, uh, because, you know, you once said to me that we have coaches for sports. Why don't we have coaches in our lives? And I think that that's important is, is that notion of, um, we, we don't always have to do it on our own and we can do it with the guidance and support and insight from others um, that have traveled through those paths or have the benefit of, of seeing others that have traveled through the path and share it with us. And that's what you do and I appreciate that. Thank you, my friend.